Hi everyone, this is Ruth Ann. I'm going to be filming a haul video for you today. These are random perfumes that I've picked up lately. Most of them are wins. I do have one that I would classify right now as iffy that I haven't decided yet. And then I have one that I'm pretty sure is a fail. So I'm going to get started. First up I have Kristen, Christian Dior Diorissimo. This is a 1970s bottle that I picked up on eBay. I believe the price was really good because it's a Dauber bottle. It doesn't have a sprayer, but that doesn't bother me at all. This is just a classic floral bouquet fragrance that is strong on Lily of the Valley. First formulated in the 1950s. I think it was 57. Absolutely beautiful, classic floral um, it's very modern smelling. This is something that you would expect to buy from Christian Dior if it had just been produced originally today. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I, I picked it up for, oh, it was under $30. Um, so really good steal. I didn't buy it because of formulation issues. It was strictly because of the price. I would have bought the modern version, and I, I, have, I don't know... Um, if the formulations are different, because I haven't compared, I haven't um, ever actually even smelled the new one. Okay, next up I have a an Arabian fragrance. This one is called Amuse, or the manufacturer is Amuse. And this is, I like this cute little box. This is simply called Musk. I don't know if you can see the name there. It's right there on the on the lid. Musk is just a beautiful, uh, honeyed, warm yellow musk. And this is a perfume oil, and it performs beautifully, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really happy to have that as a part of my um, collection. Musk fragrances are by far uh, my favorite kinds of perfumes, my favorite genre. It's my favorite note, going way back to my teenage years. I have another Arabian Perfume. This one is Club de Nuit Intense by Armoff. This is the female version. This is a dupe perfume for Tom Ford something something. I don't know. I don't really care. It's absolutely beautiful. This is a deep, sexy, woody evening fragrance. And this big bottle um, I got for about $30, $35. And this is probably going to last me the rest of my life. It's so strong. Two sprays, you're good for many hours, absolutely gorgeous. I'm glad that that is an addition. Next I have, this is Alfred Sung She. This is a tester bottle, so no top. This is a fresh, clean, white musk fragrance that is well known for its lasting power, performance, and projection. It's really nice. If This is going to be a really good performer in the summer heat and I'm glad to have it. I plan to use it a lot. Um, this is the type of genre of perfume that I need more of in my life because it performs. I have, I'm have i so kind of accustomed to using these musk perfumes that don't work very well um, because I like the scent, but if they don't perform, why do I keep buying them? I don't know. Next up, this is another big win. This one is a Freshie from Ode, um, from Roche, the House of Rocha. This one's called Eau de Rocha Fresh. So this is a female marketed perfume, but I would say it's extremely unisex. In fact, when I first sprayed it, it seemed to me like it leaned a little male. Starts out with a real loud blast of aldehydes mixed with tart citrus and it's kind of a lemon lime rather than an orange mandarin kind of scent and um, it's really loud it per performs really well and uh, so if you like freshies and you're looking for summer fragrances this is a hidden gem that I think you may want to try um, very nice and it would be one that you could get for the male in your life as well if, if they are lovers of fresh perfumes because like I said, it's really, really unisex. I have another one from the House of Rocha. This is Madame Rocha. This is an EDT perfume. This is a very classic, I believe it first was formulated in the 50s or 60s. It's a classic Shepra fragrance that's really heavy on the Lily of the Valley and Hyacinth with oak moss base and aldehydes in the top. It's very beautiful, very classic. 
very good performer. If you're a fan of classic perfumes, this one is definitely worth looking at because it's a hidden gem in my opinion and it's also very, very reasonably priced. I think I paid $22 for that one. Alright, this is my first iffy fragrance, or my, my, the one iffy fragrance. This one is also from the House of Rocha. This is Femme de Rocha. This is a classic Chypre fragrance, and the reason why it's an iffy for me is because it has a leather note, and I had thought originally that the leather note was going to be a little more downplayed than it is. This is actually a Chypre with a, the typical aldehydes at the top. It's got all the um, floral notes that you would expect in a classic 1950s perfume, but they're really all downplayed and underneath this really strong leather note um, that some people would call, call animalic, and I know that leather notes are technically animalic notes, but I really struggled personally with the note of leather in perfumes. Um, I used to wear the perfume Cabochard, and if you like Cabochard, you will definitely like Femme de Rocha. However, I really struggled with Cabochard. I could kind of tolerate it and put up with it. It took me years to get through a bottle, and then I finally just gave up on it when I had about 15 mils left. This one, I think, is definitely milder than Cabochard, and it's got a beautiful dry down, deep, deep, deep into the dry down. I'm talking about eight hours after spraying it. It is this lovely, warm, caramely, not caramely, I'm sorry, more of an ambery musk. And mixed with the florals, it's absolutely gorgeous. But it, this, this is long after that leather note has dried off. And I, I don't know, I'm iffy on this. And it, with for me, sometimes when I get a perfume... I need to wear it several times before I learn to love it, and I'm okay with that. I don't expect to love every perfume out of the right out of the gate, and I and I'm not an absolute adherent to love it for sniff. I do have a lot of love it for sniff perfumes, but I often need two, three, four rare wears on one, and then all of a sudden something clicks in my brain and I absolutely love it. That's happened with a lot of perfumes for me. And I, then I go on to have many years of, of wear out of them. So I'm hoping for the best with this perfume. Um, again, if you're interested in this, it's called Femme de Rocha from the House of Rocha, which is a French house and uh, very inexpensive. So I think I paid somewhere in the mid-20s for this bottle. And that's a full 100 mil. And then I have what I think is going to be a fail. This, again, is an Arabian perfume. And this is from the house of... Excuse me, I've got to look at this. Rosasi. This is from the house of Rosasi, and this is called Sharki. Can you see that? S-H-A-R-Q-I. This is a from their line of musk perfumes. And as you can see, the bottle is gorgeous. This is one of their premium perfumes. Excuse me, sorry about that. This is a, I'm not sure, I think this is a 50 mil. I paid about $42 for this. And for me, I, I like to take risks with musks because, again, as I said before, it's my favorite note in perfumery. And I'm always looking for a new musk, and especially something that will perform. There are three in this line, and this I picked up first because it was the lowest price. The problem with it is that it's got a funkiness to it that almost smells like mold. And I'm not sure where that comes from or why it's there. When I have there are few, very few reviews of this online and no one's ever said anything about that. And I'm wondering if my nose is a little off when it comes to some of these Arabian perfumes because I smell something in there that smells really off, really off-putting and really unpleasant. I have reviewed perfumes on this channel before that are Arabians, Arabian perfumes, and I've said they, they have this smell of toilet bowl freshener 
you know, the urinal cakes. I don't know what that note is. I don't know why I smell it and not everyone else does. When I look at the reviews on Fragrantica, not of this fragrance, but of other ones that I've noticed that note in, I will see maybe one in ten reviewers make it a note of it. So I don't know if it's one of those things that certain brains just pick up certain notes in certain ways. I can't explain it, but um, this has that unpleasant note, and it's not as strong as in some other perfumes, but it's definitely there, and it's enough that I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to wear it, and I'm really disappointed. Now, there are two others in the line, and I'm really on the fence whether or not I want to pick them up. <laughs> so... Anyway, this is my haul, and I'm going to be coming out with another video shortly, and it's going to be um, another mini haul separate from this one, and it's the, the perfumes that I've been collecting from another house that are strictly of that house that I'm really enjoying, and they've all been wins. So if you have any of these perfumes, if you like them, please comment down below, um, because I love connecting with people who have similar tastes. Uh, or if you have these and you hate them, I'd love to hear. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day.